If you're looking for a book to read That's gonna give you what you need The Quran is like a light The readers, they shine so bright It shows us the way to go Before it, we did not know When you put it in your heart I think you're gonna say I love the Quran First you gotta read it Then you understand it Then you wanna say I love Quran When you understand it Then you gotta do it Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear respected viewers, welcome to your program Quran for Kids. And in this program, we look into some ayat from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We go to the meaning of those ayat and we recite them. First of all, we recite them together and we get the chance to discuss some of the lessons that we can learn from those verses and ayat from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we get some questions and we try to answer th uh, those questions and reflect on the uh, lessons that we can get from those ayat, and uh, I do have the pleasure to have with this with me in the studio here today. Very beautiful, wonderful, amazing kids from my right. Can you introduce yourself, please? Hoda Dabur. Hoda Dabur. How old are you again? Seven years. Seven years old, and right next to Hoda Dabur is Muhammad Ibrahim Zidane. Muhammad Ibrahim Zidane. You look familiar. How old are you again? Eight. 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 What month? Eight years old. Okay, eight years old. <laughs> and how many surahs you know again? Okay. Your surah was a taqweer, if I'm not wrong, right? Is it you? You're no. working in what surah? No, I'm in Al-Qiyamah. Al-Qiyamah, yes. Surah Al-Qiyamah. And right next to Mr. Muhammad is Sheikh? Abdul Aziz Zidan. Abdul Aziz Zidan, and you are 12 or 11? 12. 12 years old, and uh, you're working in Surah Yunus, the same surah we're working on. I know that from last halaqah. And actually from some halaqat ago, some episodes. And right next to Muhammad is Sheikh? Muhammad Dabur. Muhammad Dabur, how old are you? I'm 11 years old. 11 years old. I know that. I'm your dad. So, <laughs> And uh, your surah is surah? Al-An'am. Al-An'am. Right next to Muhammad is? Ahmad Omar. Ahmad Omar. How old are you, Sheikh Ahmad? 10. 10 years old. And he just came fresh from the States. Actually from here, next to us. But uh, he is visiting from the States. And uh, you're working in what surah? Surah Al-Muzzammil. Surah Al-Muzzammil. And he's doing great, mashallah. Soon he will be finishing Quran like everybody in here. I do welcome you guys. And inshallah, let's get to the surah, the ayat that we are working on. Are you guys ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. All right, let's get to that. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل من يرزقكم من السماء والأرض قل من يرزقكم من السماء والأرض أم يملك السمع والأبصار أم يملك السمع والأبصار ومن يخرج الحي من الميت ومن يخرج الحي من الميت ويخرج الميت من الحي ويخرج الميت من الحي وَمَنْ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرُ وَمَنْ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرُ فَسَيَقُولُونَ اللَّهُ فَسَيَقُولُونَ اللَّهُ فَقُلْ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ فَقُلْ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ فَذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ رَبُّكُمُ الْحَقِّ فذلكم الله ربكم الحق فماذا بعد الحق إلا الضلال فماذا بعد الحق إلا الضلال فأنا تصرفون فأنا تصرفون Amazing, ما شاء الله, I like that. 
So last time we started talking about those ayat and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking or is telling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to ask and to challenge people. Qul, say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to them, to everybody. Man yamliku, qul man yarzuqukum. Who is the one that gives you rizq from, from what? From where? Min as samai wal ard, which is? Sky, the sky, sky and the earth. earth. Who is the one that, that gives you rizq and provision Allah. from Allah. the sky and the earth? And we talked about the cotton uh, and the plants and uh, amongst other things that really comes to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Yes. Do you have more examples of those? Things that come to us from the sky, things that come to us from earth. We were talking about the moon, the light of the sun, the sunlight, the light that comes from the moon and things that come from the earth. Any other examples? Before we move on, yeah. thinking of something, Muhammad? Um, uh, metals. Metals, yeah, we're talking about aeroplanes. Think of aeroplanes, you're flying from point A to point B, right? We're flying from Turkey the other day. Muhammad, uh, Ahmed, I believe, is flying soon somewhere, right? Flying back to the States. You are flying, you're always flying, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, Think of the aeroplane as something, it's made out of mostly of metal, right? Yeah. Iron, actually aluminum, right? Yeah. So where is, this, where is this coming from? Where is the iron, the aluminum, the, all of these things coming from? Where is it coming from? The ground. Okay. Yeah, I know it's coming from Boeing or whatever it is, and it's coming from Washington, Seattle, right? But that's where they make it. But where is it really coming from? It's coming from? The earth. earth, the ground, you know, you have to go mining and stuff and we get the f different various minerals and things and we put them together and then we can make aeroplanes, we can make cameras like these, we can make uh, watches, sh ships and, and what have you, right? Who put that in the ground? Allah. Allah. Nobody before that has like came and dig it and put it in there, it's Allah. That's what Allah is talking about in here. قُلْ مَنْ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Say, ask them, challenge them. Who is giving you stuff, gifts and rizq and good things from the sky and from the earth? From the earth, you just got the example. That airplane that flies, yes, the human being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give us the mind and the power to put things together and innovate and, and invent things, right? So we can make an aeroplane, this and that. But where, where does it really come from? It comes from uh, Earth, for example. In this case, it might be coming from els er elsewhere. Do you have other examples of things that when we really think of it, we will know that it's coming from Allah. It's nobody who made, who, uh, made it. It's coming directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way or another. Muhammad, another example? Um, <coughs> jewels, really expensive, but comfort coming from the ground. Jewels coming from the ground it's just like a jewels is is nothing but what a stone it's a special kind of a stone that makes all of these jewels and then kings will have them in their crowns or pearls you know where, where pearls come from where do they come from pearl the little you know expensive thing where does it come from ahmed they come from clams in the water they come from s specific kind of clams in the water you know this kind of Lamb or shells that is in the water somewhere in Arabia or in the Gulf and elsewhere. That, this kind of pearl, very expensive pearl, if it's natural, it's coming from there. I've seen that somewhere in, uh, in uh, Disney, I believe. They were extracting it. And subhanAllah, it's very expensive little piece in there, but it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who puts it in there. Do you have other examples of things that when we really deeply think, where do they come from? We figure out that قُلْ مَنْ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Who is the one that gives you stuff from the sky and from the earth? They come from Allah. Abdul Aziz. Uh, the birds, the, there's like a bird. It's a what kind of bird? Kubra. Kubra. Parrot. Parrot. The parrot? The yeah, parrot? Yeah. What about it? How like some of them, when you talk to them, when you, you say they repeat? Yeah, they repeat yeah. the talk. They repeat it, okay. So Allah give them this talent, this power. They can... Abdul Aziz, Abdul Aziz, right? <laughs> so that's what they can they can do. What is the other kind of bird that we saw the other day, Muhammad? Uh, it's like... Uh, what is it called? Macau, Macau, Macau. Macau, whatever, yeah. So it's very... 
you know, amazing thing. So all of these things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Anything else can you think of that Allah has given us? Before we move on, Huda. Animals. Animals, like? Like uh, a lion. A lion and everything. So is Allah giving us the lion? <laughs> to, to watch it and enjoy it, right? So, good. Not to hunt it and stuff. Because it's... Uh, yes, Muhammad. Glass. Glass. Where does it come from? Sand. Sand. Silicon, which is coming from sand, right? And they put it into some heat. Can you believe it, Muhammad? This is coming from sand. <laughs> yes, it is. Right? Did you know that before? It's some kind of sand. They put it under pressure, I believe, or they put it into a certain process, and then you get sand, you get uh, glass, some glasses, right? So this is from Allah, sand that you see out there. You can make glasses, you can make a lot of other things. Ahmed? Paper. Paper. We were talking about this last time. You were not with us. It's, they are coming from? Trees. Trees. Some trees. They get them, they put them into some paper mills and some factories, and they spread them somehow and now you end up having all of these sheets and papers they are not they, they are coming from Allah from the trees that Allah made who that cardboard where do they come from trees from trees a lot, different kind of paper Muhammad light light where does it come from Allah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah can you quote the ayah that we you know it you know it Muhammad and Abdul Aziz, uh, um, uh, uh, from the beginning of Surah Al-An'am, we discussed a couple of halaqa, a couple of episodes ago. And not really about the, the star. This ayah is talking about the star being the guide, you, being used for navigation. But the ayat from the beginning of Surah Al-An'am, where Allah said, It is Him who made the darknesses and made light. This light is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, in a way or another, He is the one who created that. The physical light and the uh, moral light as well. Yes, Muhammad, do you have something else before we continue? Ink. What is it? Ink. Ink. What is it made of? Uh, uh, I don't really know. Uh, they, uh, they use it from roots uh, of, of a kind of blueberry for blue ink. Okay, that should be natural ink, I believe. The roots of blueberries. Mm, I like that. I like blueberries. Okay, all the berries. So, do you like them? Okay, so we can go probably and eat some berries together. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying He is the one that gives you all of that. Whatever comes to you from the sky, earth, and think about that. When we're done with this, go home, think of anything, anything. Think of it and keep going back. <coughs> Who made that? Where is this coming from? You will know that it comes back to something, comes back to something else, and then it's coming from Allah. Because nobody, He is the one who made the sand. Nobody else made the sand. He is the one who made iron. You have one more example before we finish? It was uh, yesterday uh, you told us uh, um, we promised you that we would uh, look at the skies yesterday. Did you look at the sky yesterday? Yeah. You did? Yeah. What did you see? S uh, clouds. Okay. Sun. Clouds, sun. Did you see sun in the night? That's no, a miracle. in the morning. In the morning, okay. <laughs> yeah, I misunderstood you. I thought you were looking at night. Because the sky is, for me, much more wonderful at night when you see stars and the moon if it's especially if it's full moon and everything right but yes look around that's what Allah is telling us look around and think who is making that that's what Quran is talking about it gives us rules it gives us everything but really the, the main thing in the Quran that we read is this look around look into yourself who made you look into this the light the sky the iron the aeroplane and think and think and you will know that this is from nowhere but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything comes back to Him. So many questions coming up. Inshallah, we continue. We take a quick break and we come back to continue. Stay tuned. If you're looking for a book to read that's going to give you what you need, the Quran is like a light. The readers, they shine so bright. If you're looking for a book to read that's going to give you what you need, the Quran is like a light. The readers, they shine so bright. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to our program, Quran for Kids. And we've been talking about the couple of ayat from Surah Yunus alayhi salam. What was the number again? 
130? No. 31? 31 and to 32. Yeah. Those couple of ayat, amazing ayat. All the ayat from the Quran are amazing, but when we look at, into really deeply into the ayat and take our time to think and reflect, we will figure out and we will find out that there are so many good dimensions and aspects that we can learn from the ayat. Right, Muhammad? Yes. You are relaxing, right? Yeah. Okay. So the, those ayat are talking about what? <clears throat> Allah being the source of everything. He is the one who is giving us everything from the sky, from the earth. And now we move on with the ayat, Who is the one that controls the hearing and the eyesight? Allah. It's Allah. Towards the end, then he will say so many things, and he will say, it's Allah who is doing all of that. Now, before you were born, you didn't have, you were not even there. You didn't have ear, you didn't have eyes. Who is the one who gave you all of that? It's Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, in order for you to hear, so many things should be there. There should be somebody who is talking. He should be talking loud enough for you to hear. He should be talking within certain frequencies. So many other conditions. He should, be, he should have an ear, work an ear. He shouldn't be too far from you so you can hear him. Who is controlling all of that? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muhammad. The most important thing, there should be air for the... There should be air. Earth. There should be air. Guess what the astronauts, when they are in the spaceships or out, outer space, can they talk? Can they hear each other? No. no. They need mic. They need I'm asking. No. Yeah, they have to use mics and stuff, right? But other than this, can they talk? And because it's kind of waves, I guess you studied that. They, no. You know, it's kind of waves. The waves travel through the air. Who is making all of this process possible? Allah it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one who controls all of that. يَمْلِكُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارِ The eyesight. For you to see, See the strong light that's coming in our face? Light. For me to see you, the eye should be there. You should be there. Something to see. I should have an eye. I should have an eye. Okay. I should have an eye that's working. And all the conditions are there. Light and what have you. And then light comes to you, Abdul Aziz, for example. And back to my eye. Right? Do you know this process? And then it goes inside and I see you. Retina and all of these things, and I see you. So, so complicated process. When we just open our eyes in the morning and we see things, we are able to see. That's not as simple as that. It's a very complicated process, and Allah is the one who is controlling all of that. Turn off the light. Can you see? No. You can't see, right? No. Okay. So you can't see if, the, if there's no light. Some animals can see if there's no light. Our light, kind of light. They have the infrared things. Like all the animals that, <clears throat> that work at night, that go hunting at night, they have this capability of seeing when it's dark for us. Allah is the one who is in charge of all of that. It's not us. We're just like tools that are using those tools to see or to hear, but it's Allah who is controlling all of that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we move on. What does this mean? What's hay? What does hay mean? Hay. Ahmed? Alive. Something that's alive. Hi, I'm alive. You are alive now, right? Are you alive, Abdul Aziz? I mean, Muhammad? Yes. Still alive? Yes. Okay. You're thinking about it? Okay, you're alive. I see you. Okay. Al Mayit. What's Al Mayit? The What's Mayit? Dead. 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 Something that doesn't have this form of life that we have, right? So Allah is saying, what, the, what, the, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying here in this ayat? Amma yukhrijul hayya. Min al -mayyit. He is the one. Who is the one? He is asking. It's still challenging. Who is the one that brings life from death? Or something alive from something dead? Well, and the opposite. Something dead from something alive. He brings out from the something alive, something dead. It's Allah. And He will continue. How? Let's think of that. Can you think of anything that Allah brings from something that's like dead, doesn't have life? Allah brings out of it life. Yes, Abdul Aziz. Like Sayyidina Isa when the guy died and... Uh, Sayyidina Isa, Prophet Jesus, peace be yeah. upon him. What yeah, about when him? He, when, uh, when the guy... When the, um, Which guy? There was some guy, he died and then the... Uh, the uh, oh yeah, the miracle yeah, that he did? Yeah, that, uh, when he woke... When he, yeah, that's, that's, that's like... Example. Okay. It was from Allah. Yeah. Allah said in the Quran that you, Jesus, peace be upon him, you were capable and able of bringing the dead back to life 
by my permission, permission of God, Allah, our God and God of Jesus, peace be upon him and God of everybody. But yes, we need to see something with our eyes in here that we see probably every day or around us, Muhammad. And the day of judgment, you're going to be dead. And, you're gonna and Allah brings us back to life. Plants. But plants. That's what I was looking at. You said plants, right? Yes. Plants. Plants, you see a dead land, ground, desert, let's say, or barren. It doesn't have anything, not barren, but doesn't have any life in it. And then the rain comes down, and then what happens? Because well, let's say in the winter, all the grass uh, go dormant, like turn brown, not all of them, most of the grasses, and most of the things in the winter, in Alaska, for example, and when it's freezing, and uh, elsewhere. So in the winter, there's not much life. But when the rain comes, spring comes, what happens? Comes a lot of girls again. Life comes, but it's a spring. It's uh, all the flowers, all the life, all the birds come back and whatever. So that's kind of life comes back again from death. Look at the winter. Mm, it's like no life. No, nothing is moving. Look at the spring or the summer. Everything is there, eating and swimming and everything. So this is life coming back from death. Who does this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ta it's not us, we cannot melt the, all of this snow in the poles, we cannot, we cannot control this process, we cannot, let's say for example, we want to make, we want to delay spring this year, let's make it, let's delay it for five, six months, can we do that? No, no, we cannot, it's Allah who is controlling everything, all of these, he is talking about this, do you have more examples of that? More yeah. examples? Us. We were dead. We were not here. Allah said in the Quran, وَكُنْتُمْ أَمْوَاتًا فَأَحْيَاكُمْ You were dead. And He gave you life. And then you will die again. So we were dead. Before the day you were born, where were you? No, you were not there. You were kind of dead. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you life and you are in the tummy of your mother and then you are ba baby, you come out baby, smiling, actually crying in the beginning, right? You remember? No. <laughs> you don't. All of us were crying, but we don't remember. We come back and we, 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 we go out and we, you know, grow up and we smile, laugh, walk, talk and everything, right? And then the life ends. So that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bringing, uh, bringing life from death, from nothing, from no, nowhere. Like we make, we were talking about aeroplanes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how he works and how do we work. We get stuff together. We get the metal together, we get the wires, the plastic, all the engineers and all of these, so many teams work together so you, you have the aeroplane, right? But for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He made us from what? What are we made of? Mud. I mean, that's Adam alayhi salam, but it's Allah. Like, Abu Aziz was talking about rice before we start, right? He's hungry <laughs> no, and he wants to eat No, I was not talking about rice, I was giving an example. Yeah, I mean, before we start, but I'm just quoting this. this. Is my mind. <laughs> okay, so the, the, the thing, the point I'm trying to make here is we eat rice or anything else. Don't eat too much rice though. It's good, but too much of anything is not good. We eat and then we, we grow up. He's small, he comes small like all of us, and then we grow. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is causing this process to happen. We are made of what? Can you say we are made out of rice? Or, made out of, <laughs> or how did he make us in the first place? In the first, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who... Subhanallah, in such an amazing process, He gets us here and we grow up and we eat and we grow even more and we don't know anything and then we learn, we acquire knowledge, we get to know stuff, we speak, we're not able to speak, we're not able to even walk, we walk, we understand, that's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making us alive, making us who we are from nothing, from nothing. We did not make ourselves. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ Think of the egg when it hatches, for example. You ever seen this before? No. I like animals and I have some chicken. And I've seen this a lot. You, ha you see the, the chicken? It comes and it, you know, uh, sets and then give it 20, 21 days. <clears throat> and then you see the egg is there. Egg is like dead. You don't see it. It's just like a little piece of, it's an egg. And then the uh, chick comes out of it, subhanAllah. Li life comes from nothing, from death. And that's all the animals and all the creation is like that. An example for that is we are alive, we can talk, an animal is walking, running, everything, and now it's time to die, to, to leave life. 
the line that you were talking about is not able to move anymore because it's dead. Life just left. So all of that is things and lessons for us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reflect on, right? وَمَنْ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرِ And who is taking care of everything? Allah. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't take care of the air. You don't take care of the air. You don't take care of the uh, 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 clouds that you watched yesterday or the stars. Allah is taking care of that and uh, uh, the temperature is going to go up. The storm, this storm is going to come this way or go this way. It's Allah who is controlling all of that and he is, that's his business. If you ask and challenge people and ask them these questions, all of them would say that it's not us, it's God. Somehow he made all of that. It's not us who made this or controlled this or caused the, the chick to hatch. Or, nobody can control that, it's Allah. فَقُلْ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ So, remember that was a question or a challenge that the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to ask people. Say, ask them, who is giving you all of that? It's Allah. They will say Allah. If you challenge them, if you put that in their face, who is giving you water, who is giving you this, who is, it's Allah. فَقُلْ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ If this is the case, won't you be conscious of Allah? Won't you think of Allah? Won't you reflect and ponder over that? Yes, it's Allah. And then you become believer. If, if you really think about it, very simple. It's a very simple thing. Who has given you all of that? Who has given you metal and iron and things from the sky, from the earth? Who is controlling the hearing and all of these parts? It's Allah. If you really simply think about it and go deeper into it, you will know that it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَذَلِكُمُ Allah. This is Allah. رَبُّكُمْ Your Lord. You remember when we were talking about Al-Fatiha, what does Lord mean? Lord is? God. 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 No. Caretaker. Somebody who takes care of you. فَذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ رَبُّكُمْ This is your Lord. Your, this is Allah. Your Lord. The one who takes care of you, makes you hear. Gives you life and makes you hear and, and see and gives you food and gives you stuff from the sky, from the earth. فَمَاذَا بَعْدَ الْحَقِّ إِلَّا الضَّلَى This is your Lord, the truth. What's beyond the truth but falsehood? This is the truth. This is the right thing. This is the right fact that it's Allah who has made all of that. And anything beyond that is just wrong. فَأَنَّا تُصْرَفُونَ How could you be taken away from this fact? Let's, let me conclude. Let's conclude by getting Muhammad, inshallah, if you are ready, to recite those couple of ayat to us and we conclude this episode by that. Are you ready? Yeah, go ahead, please. A'udhu Billahi. قُلْ مَنْ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَمَّنْ يَمْلِكُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارِ أَمَّنْ يَمْلِكُ أَمَّنْ يَمْلِكُ أَمَّنْ يَمْلِكُ السَّمْعَ أَمَّنْ يَمْلِكُ السَّمْعَ like this أَمَّنْ يَمْلِكُ أَمَّنْ أَمَّنْ يَمْلِكُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَمَنْ يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيْتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيْتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ وَمَنْ, ومن, يدبر ومن يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرِ فَسَيَقُولُونَ اللَّهِ فَقُلْ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ فَذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ رَبُّكُمُ الْحَقِّ فَمَاذَا بَعْدَ الْحَقِّ إِلَّا الضَّلَالِ فَأَنَّا تُصْرَفُونَ أحسنت. Good job. Well done. MashaAllah. أحسنتم جميعا. You did great. And by this we come to the conclusion of this episode. And we see you next time inshallah. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If you're looking for a book to read That's going to give you what you need The Quran is like a light The readers, they shine so bright It shows us the way to go Before it we did not know When you put it in your heart I think you're going to say I love the Quran First you got to read it Then you understand it Then you want to say I love Quran When you understand it Then you got to do it then you want to say, I love Quran. When you do it, you will be rewarded. Then you want to say, I love Quran. But first you got to read it. Then you understand it. Then you want to say, I love Quran.